Waking up on the wrong side of the bed is actually a very real thing. You see, our brain doesn't actually go to sleep when we go to sleep. Our brain processes all the information from the day before and the weeks before and anything lingering that hasn't yet been dealt with. So our dreams are a big part of that and our amygdala, yeah, you guessed it, wide awake while we're sleeping. So if she's carrying stress into our sleep, then she will disrupt our sleep patterns, which means we could wake up the next day with a amygdala hangover. Yeah, that's a thing. So if you ever wake up in the morning feeling stressed out or anxious or oh, wide awake, you know, 4 a.m., not that this ever happens to me, it totally happens to me, because you're pondering something that you haven't put to bed the night before, well, that's your amygdala, making sure that you're aware that there is a possible tiger in your bedroom, also known as the stress or anxiety experience that she is ruminating on. So waking up on the wrong side of the bed, yep, our amygdala does that. And the great news is, is because our brain is so malleable and plastic, we really have the opportunity in our hands to make changes and help ourselves get a really, really good night's sleep. So step one. CPR for the amygdala. Yep, you guessed it, that creating personal resilience for the amygdala. We do that before we go to bed. One of the things I teach all my patients is that before you go to sleep, review your day. Notice if there are any moments of activation, stress, anxiety, worry, tension, whatever, hanging out back there. Anything that your amygdala and the rest of your brain is still chewing on or worrying about. If there are, Tune into those moments one by one and do several rounds of that CPR for the amygdala exercise. Wrap that warm fuzzy blanket around your brain and let it know you're okay and that you can let that stuff go. It doesn't need to be carried with you into sleepy time. If you don't know what CPR for the amygdala is, we have linked the intro and guided practice video below for you. Check it out. It's a really powerful tool. You want to be calming your brain before sleep. Then we want to lull ourselves into a nice, loving, cradled experience while we're in bed, of course. And so you can bring in some of that creating possibilities where, what if I got a good night's sleep? What if I was sleepy? What if I was restful? And the cool thing about the Havening Touch is it's slowing your brain down. It's giving your brain a break from cortisol. It's releasing norepinephrine. It's decreasing your blood pressure. It's decreasing your heart rate. It's giving you oxytocin. Yes, all good things that we want to be carrying with us into sleep and all things that we want to have be a part of our morning experience. So if we dose our brain with this loving havening touch and set ourselves up for success, we wake up in the morning with a better rested system. And guess what? If there's still some lingering stuff, well, right back to that CPR for the amygdala. Clear out your brain before you get rolling on your day. And then once again, creating possibilities. How do you want to go into the rest of your day? Hmm. Yes, healing in your hands. You get to set yourself up for success. Do you want to be strategic? Do you want to be confident? Do you want to be energized? What do you want to carry with you? And use that exercise to link it in, breathe it into your brain and your body, and set yourself up for success and have a wonderful day. Oh.